Hello everybody and welcome back to Odin's Movie Vlog. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well. And today we're doing a little bit of a box office preview and also a little bit of a long-term box office prediction slash estimate as to what Endgame is going to do after yesterday's massive opening day record setting opening day. Actual record setting opening day. Unlike some of the things that are going to be talked about here by our boy, our buddy over at Forbes, Scottaboy Mendelssohn, where it says, Us and Captain Marvel are about to face direct competition from Pet Cemetery and Shazam. Notice how Shazam is the last movie mentioned there, even though it's going to be the number one movie of this weekend. How do I know this? Because there is a lot of positive buzz behind, buzz behind, buzz behind Shazam. And also on top of that, too, in its previews, it made three over $3 million, like around $3.3 million, and that is is significantly better than even what Aquaman was able to do in around the same amount of time and around the same number of theaters also. So, of course, how is Scotty Boyd Mendelson going to start off this article by talking a little bit more about Captain Marvel? And that's the reason why I, I would really want to talk about Shazam. I really wouldn't to just talk about how Shazam's going to do, the numbers for Shazam. But, as you can see, the media has an obvious agenda. They cannot talk about any movie unless they first start off by saying, but Captain Marvel. Look, the first picture on here is Captain Marvel, even though this is supposed to be talking about the movies upcoming this weekend. And, of course, it's not until you get down here that you get two actual Shazam numbers instead. Captain Marvel crossed the billion-dollar mark yesterday worldwide, making it the biggest gross live action movie ever with a female director or co-director oh my gosh guys records being broken the highest grossing ever live action with a female director or co-director Okay, see, when you get into the weeds like this, when this starts to be major milestones to you, and you start to realize, oh my gosh, can you believe that women can do it guys? Women can be as great as men? You realize that what you're saying there is you're basically trying to say that women are somehow less than, that they're playing this game of catch-up. Instead of saying, hey, a great director, doesn't matter, doesn't matter that they're a whammon or a male, for that matter, if they're a good director, they're a good director. If they're a bad director, they're a bad director. And if you get focused and you care so much about the gender of the person behind the camera, maybe the actual problem, using a little metaphor from us, is you. Maybe what you need to do is look in your own mirror and say, wait a minute, why do I keep thinking in these terms? Why can't I just live my life and enjoy it and say, oh, look, this, this is a great movie. This is a great movie. All this other stuff doesn't matter. Ah, oh, wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be nice? There's a song that goes that way as well. But yes, indeed, she was a co-director on this film, and both of them, even two brains together, was not able to give a good film. But oh, it made a billion dollars, Odin. What are you talking about, man? Oh, you're just complaining. You're just, you know, whining. No, it made a billion dollars. This is a stated fact. But just because a film makes a billion dollars doesn't make it a good film. I've given plenty of examples. I still love going back to that Alice in Wonderland one because they obviously cannot even, they can't really respond to, oh, that's ridiculous. Okay, well, Alice in Wonderland, uh, Alice in Wonderland made over a billion dollars, got a sequel, and the sequel bombed. Now, am I saying that Captain Marvel sequel is going to bomb? Not necessarily. I do think, though, that a lot of people have been turned off by this character, not just because of the movie being mediocre at best, being a C-minus film, a C-level film at best, objectively speaking. You know, subjectively, I would give it an F, but subjectively speaking, C minus. And that's a very fair score. And you can look to most critics and they would actually agree with you. Look at their actual scores. Don't look at whether they give it a fresh rating or a rotten rating going to that nasty site over there, Rotten Tomatoes. No, instead, actually look at their ratings. And overall, it's in the 60s, which is, is not great. It's, it's not terrible, but it's not great either. It basically means that it's one of the, you know, it's one of the least impressive MCU films, least impressive uh, superhero films in general to come out, but luckily we indeed have the first, the actual, the real Captain Marvel himself, Shazam, coming out this weekend, which is very, very exciting. For those that don't know, originally Shazam was known as Captain Marvel, then of course there was this whole rights battle, and eventually he became the words that he would say from the very beginning, which was Shazam, which I'm very excited for, to be perfectly honest. I think the trailers have made this film look a lot of fun. I remember when the trailers came out for Aquaman and Shazam, I was more excited for Shazam than I was for Aquaman. Aquaman, to me, had a lot of problems with it. I think it was a lot of fun. I think it deserved the billion dollars that that film made. But I would also say that, you know, overall, you know, when you look at the technical aspects of the film, there were a little, you know, there were a few problems with it, which is why it's not my favorite, you know, DCEU film. But Shazam looks like it's a well-crafted film, put well together, and also is getting a lot of good buzz from critics, from audience members, everybody. When it's getting universal praise from all peoples, you know, it's a good film. You know, what's so funny is that they try and say, oh, but this film got universal praise. Yeah, only if you look to these certain hand-picked sites and these hand-picked people that claim to be, oh, the, you know, the errors of all that is truth and all that is good. I'm sorry, but I can look to the thousands upon thousands of people who said I had no interest in seeing this movie because of the political nonsense going on behind the scenes, let alone what actually we found out going on on screen, including the breaking of the canon, but I digress. This weekend, we have something to look forward to. We got something positive to look forward to, and that is indeed a comedy. Just look at that man in those tights. Look at it. 
Uh, now for the record, the Anna Boat and Ryan Fleck directed Captain Marvel has already earned a billion dollars worldwide as of today, 360 million domestically, and again, as you can see, it's still talking about this freaking movie. Even Shazam put the hurt on Danvers on a scale intentionally exaggerated example alert. The Dark Knight's opening weekend stomping poor Hellboy into dust on Hellboy 2 Golden Army. Second weekend, the MCU flick has already huge hits. So basically, yes, this is going to be dominating the market. And also in two weeks, guess what we get? That's right, Endgame, which is going to dominate every single market. So basically what that means is that Captain Marvel has pretty much made the max amount of money that's going to make, which is why beforehand when I was saying, oh yeah, by the end of its run, it's going to have, you know, maybe 1.2 to 1.5 billion, probably closer to 1.1 to 1.3 at this point. I would definitely scale that number down a little bit because it's going to have a lot of competition starting this weekend, going into the next couple weeks as well. Once Endgame's out, no one's going to see Captain Marvel anymore because there's going to be really no reason to. And as I said before, what's interesting to me is going to be what that drop off for Endgame is going to be because a lot of people are probably going to be like, all right, 11 years, 22 films, now 23 with Endgame, I'm done. But Shazam, how is Shazam going to do? Well, it looks like Shazam, according to you know Warner Brothers themselves, think that it's going to end up around $45 million this weekend. Now, I think that's a pretty low ball estimate. Now, obviously, that's coming from the studio directly, coming directly from Warner Brothers, and they are likely going to always low ball a finger because obviously they don't want to be embarrassed. You know, they want to try and give it as low as possible so that when it does better, then they can say, oh, it exceeded all of our expectations. This is something, unfortunately, that many films and studios do. They did it with Captain Marvel, and they will always continue to do it because they want to be able to say, oh, it broke records, it broke expectations, and all these other things. And that includes not just the studios, but obviously the shills in the media as well. But of course, this is a movie that's not going to get crazy amounts of protection and crazy amounts of press coverage. Note how in this article, which should be dedicated completely to, you know, completely to Shazam and Pet Cemetery, the two new films coming out this weekend, we've already spent most of the time talking about how it compares to Captain Marvel. Notice how in this, Captain Marvel, Captain Marvel, oh my goodness, what else do we have going on here? Oh, once you get to us, oh, wait a minute now, oh, wait. Mm, oh, now, okay, yeah, now, okay, now we're not talking about Captain Marvel anymore, okay, I gotcha, well, it's because he's comparing Captain Marvel to, to the other Captain Marvel, Shazam, and that, that, that makes sense, okay, yeah, sure, <laughs> we'll see, but anyway, 45 million dollars, I think that's a little bit low, probably getting closer to the 60, the 60 to 90 million, I would say, in that range, because it's got positive buzz going in, people are excited for it, I think, you know, obviously not to the same levels. It's not going to do as well as Captain Marvel, unfortunately, because of course it doesn't have the Disney machine behind it, making sure that every single ticket is being sold in every single theater at the highest prices being possible. So if it had that kind of machine behind it, then Shazam probably would get up there. But because it doesn't, because it is unfortunately a DCU film in the Warner Brothers hands, which again, we've had, you know, a couple films, pretty good films with Wonder Woman and Aquaman now behind their belts. This one seems to be another one. At the end of the day, though, it's going to be interesting to see what happens nonetheless. So let's hope that we get that 60 to 90 million dollars, because if we can get this film to over 400, 500, 600 million dollars, if we can do even well, I would, again, my range is, I think 600 million might be the capstone for this film, but first and second weekend will tell us a little bit about that. But those are my thoughts going in. 45 million from the studio seems to be around right, right. Seems to be about right. Now, talking about Endgame, oh my goodness, Endgame is reportedly cracking to break box office records, which is to no one's surprise, with around $800 million worldwide in just its debut. Now, take, you know, take a step back for a second. Captain Marvel did almost a half a billion dollars in its opening weekend. If we know that that film lost a lot of revenue because a lot of people didn't go to see that, that's not my speculation. That is based off of people telling me themselves that they are not going to see that and also just look at the audience scores and the not interested score. Trust me, there are thousands upon thousands of people that did not and did not see it. This one is a different animal because there are a lot more people that want to see the end of the story, including people like myself that did not want to even give or support anything towards Captain Marvel, which is why she didn't get my money but I saw it. Anyway, when it comes to Endgame, though, we see $800 million reportedly worldwide. That's insane. I think that basically, if that's a lowball estimate, if we start to get reports, because obviously we're still a little too far out, but if we start getting reports from Disney that they think that they will rank, you know, make around $800 million worldwide, and since most studios tend to try and give a more conservative estimate, you have a film here that, theoretically speaking, could make close to a billion dollars in just its opening weekend. If any film could do it, it would be this one. No doubt in my mind. I mean, just look at the pre-sales, for example. Again, going back to Deadline Hollywood. Now, people say, oh, didn't you just say in a previous video that the pre-sales don't matter? Well, yeah, because pre-sales don't really mean a whole lot because it depends on who shows up on the day. And that does indeed factor in. Now, does that mean that just because pre-sales are good, that means that the pre on the day sales aren't going to be good? No. Again, I, that's the reason why I got Captain Marvel wrong was because I took the normies and I did not take them seriously. And I didn't realize how many normies had actually been a part of the MCU 
and have been brainwashed to basically see anything with the MCU on it. But Avengers Endgame is a different animal. This is, again, a film 11 years in the making, 23 films. This is going to be the 23rd film, the end of a saga, not just the end of a phase. This is going to be gigantic. And as you see, it says, first day pre-sales record for Fandango and Adam Marvel High for Regal CinemaCon update. So the third update as of 3.08 p.m. was that Fandango is reporting the Avengers Endgame has notched the best first day U.S. sales record for the online ticket retailer beating The Force Awakens, and it only took six hours. So what Force Awakens did in a day has been shattered. And keep in mind, Star Wars The Force Awakens was a gigantic movie. It was a huge event film. It was a movie that people were waiting for. It was a movie that so many people were hyped for, and yet Endgame has shattered that in hours. And it's still, still selling tickets. So as you can see up here, in the first day only, <laughs> first day pre-sellers, Endgame is now number one, shattering that of The Force Awakens, The Last Jedi, Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, and Infinity War. Interesting how one movie that the movies, you know, kept talking about that the media couldn't stop talking about, Captain Marvel is not on that top five list. Isn't that interesting? Even Rogue One, which only made a billion dollars, did better on their first opening day. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? But I digress. But if that is the case, if this film, again, broke records here, which we know of, based off of Fandango and Adam, obviously that's not everything. Obviously there's a lot more factors to take into it class. But if we take into account... This, doing very well in the pre-sales, with the early estimates tracking $800 million, that could obviously be a lot smaller, could be a lot bigger, but, I mean, again, this is Endgame. And I think anyone with a brain would stop by and say, okay, there really isn't, I mean, there is a, some backlash to this, there are some people say, I'm done with the entire MCU, I'm done with Disney, and I respect people who have that opinion, but that number is a lot smaller than the number that was like, alright, okay, I don't want to support Captain Marvel because Brie Larson is an idiot, <laughs> because Brie Larson is just saying really stupid things. Very different market, very different audience, and I think that this film, therefore, if it makes this close to billion in its opening weekend, and it gets close to 1.5 billion by its second weekend, if that's 60% of its entire total, you have a film that very well could get very close to getting to the three billion dollar mark. Now you know that's what they're going for here. You know that Disney wants to claim that spot. You know that they would love to be able to surpass Avatar which they now own the, distribu <laughs> the distribution rights to because of the Fox deal. You know, though, that they would love to have Endgame, an Avengers film, a Disney-run film, be at that number one spot. So that's why you're seeing so much promotion. This is why you're seeing so many ads. This is why you are seeing so much craziness going on right now because they are going to try and get as many butts in the seats as possible. And guess what? They don't even have to promote for this film. They could literally just say, it's Endgame, and it would make $2 billion. With the fact that they're going to be pushing this, that they're going to be trying to push every single person, as many people as they can, into those seats to pay as high of a price as possible with all the IMAX, 3D, and Dolby showings, this is a film that very well, very, very well, could be a $3 billion film by the end of its run, could get close to $2 billion within the first three, four weeks. And if that happens, holy crap, Disney's going to make a crap ton of profit off of it. However... Where do they go from here? What is its future? See, right now, the you know, we have Endgame, and then the question is, where do you go from here? And if we take Kevin Feige by his word, he's made clear that what they did with Captain Marvel is what they're going to want to do with a lot of other characters. They've already talked about how the Eternals, even though the characters don't really have any sexualities, they've already said, we want to make one of them homosexual. Even though none of that is really a part of the comics in the first place. If that's the direction you decide to go in, if you decide to start changing the sexualities of certain characters, if you decide to start changing certain things and pushing certain political agendas, which is not telling a story anymore, but literally trying to push a political message, you're going to lose people. You're already having a drop-off because if Robert Downey Jr. is done, you're going to have a drop-off. If Iron Man's done, you're going to have a drop-off. If a bunch of other people are dropping off, boom, you're going to lose people. That's a given at this point because of just how gigantic this is. You can only grow so high, especially in a theater business that is contracting every single year. Think about how the box office is contracting every single year because more people would rather stay at home and wait for things to come out on Redbox, wait for things to come on Netflix, on Hulu, etc. That is growing every single year, which means that the cap of what a movie can make is getting smaller. This is going to be the biggest film, possibly, that can ever exist. Seriously, think about it. Think about how long theaters actually have. People put chef lies on the theaters and say, oh, maybe the next 10, 20 years, you're not going to have any theaters anymore. You're not going to have uh, the same type of impact that theaters used to have. And if that's the shelf life... Can you think of any other film that's going to have the same kind of buildup? Again, it took 11 years to build up to this. And if you think they're going to be able to do the same thing while at the same time going woke, it's not going to happen. But anyway, guys, what are y'all thoughts about this? Do you think that it's getting close to the billion dollars on opening weekend alone? We'd love to hear your thoughts about that. But also, in all seriousness, Shazam. 
Do you have your tickets yet? If you don't, buy them. Seriously. This is a DC film that actually looks like a hell of a lot of fun. This is a DC film that I am very happy to say I bought an opening night ticket for. This is one of the first DC films that I've actually been excited about. My Valkyrie, Tina, has said that this is a great film, has loved it. A lot of other people, part of my channel, they love this movie too and say it's fantastic. I just saw the Jeremy Johns video today where he gave it a awesome tacular, which is a very great score from him. So it looks like this film's going to be a lot of fun. Cannot wait to see it. And let's try and push it. Let's try and get it closer to that $100 million opening weekend. Again, I think that's a little bit out of reach at this point, but obviously anything can happen. But let's try and get it close there. Let's try and get this film the support that it needs because the DC Universe really needs it, especially with that awesome Joker trailer, which I'm going to try and film a reaction to on the Welcome to Asgard channel. People have been asking for trailer reviews. I think I'm going to try them over there because I've been having issues with copyright claims and all that stuff. And so I might try it over there and see if I can figure out how to, you know, get past it or how to challenge it correctly. So that way I can test it out on that channel before moving them over to the main channel, possibly. But also, guys, please look at the links in my description below. I indeed have Amazon affiliate leaks, leaks, links. And if you want two free audiobooks, click on that link. You can get a free trial of Audible, and with your free trial of Audible, you actually get two free audiobooks with it. Obviously, obviously, I get a little small commission from that, but it's free for you. You get two free audiobooks, and why wouldn't you do that? Also, if you want Amazon Prime, if you want to watch The Expanse, Gary Nadrock's channel has been talking about that, <laughs> that series nonstop. If you want to binge watch it, you can get a free 30-day Prime trial membership also by clicking on the links in my, you know, also on clicking on my affiliate links in the description below. So again, think about it. You don't have to. It's free. Again, it is free. You get two free audiobooks if you do the Audible. And also you get a free 30-day trial if you do that link there too. And also, I get a little bit of something too. So if you want to support the channel that way, that helps me out a lot. It means I can do more for you guys. It means more I can do for the channel. And it means I can invest more time here. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Let me know your own comments in the sections below especially on the pinned comments as well, because I tend to read the pinned comment section a little bit more so now that the comment section's kind of gone crazy. But anyway, you have a great day. And as always, God bless.